This episode is brought to you by CBD TV, your one-stop shop for all your CBD needs. Use code FRESHOUT to get 15% off your next order. So you're saying after that meeting, Sal disappeared. What happened to him? Well, nobody knew what happened to Sal until... Let me back up and tell you a quick story because we were... I wanted to get that money. I'd rather get the money out of the guy, you know, uh, before we killed him. All right? So if he had the money some way or another... And, uh, oh, this was before he was, yeah, it was either the money or the restaurant was one of the two. I took the cash first, you know, that was the easiest way to go. I didn't want to go through the hassle of the fucking restaurant. So before going through the, um, the Italians, I called the Colombians. I said, look, let's do this instead. Let's not kill the guy. Let's just rough him up a little bit, all right? Now, this is funny. It's kind of backtracking a little bit because I got so much shit going on in my brain. So I call. Colombians always got someone down here. I said, You got anybody down here? <laughs> somebody just waiting. They always got somebody down oh, here. Shit. They fucking rotate them like fucking, it's unbelievable. Bring in seven, bring in seven, bring in seven. They always got someone waiting. Oh, right? shit. So you got anybody down here? And he goes, uh, Yeah, I got somebody down here. I said, Speak English? He goes, Yep, good English. I said, okay. So I said, I need some work done. Just a little, uh, he needs to be able to uh, be convincing. Oh, he goes, trust me, this guy convinces you. <laughs> He's very convincing. Yeah. I said, okay. So I talked to the guy and I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. Listen to me exactly. It was, it was Valentine's Day. I said, we're going to go to the flower shop because he's, he's hiding in his house. I know he's hiding in his house. This is before he went into real hiding. He's hiding in his house, hoping Mario would not, Mario is going to come through with something. He's still hoping here. And I says, all right, to get this cocksucker out of his house. So I says, it's Valentine's Day. There's a flower shop down the street named Joey Flowers. Now, I had no idea that that flower shop belonged to Joey Flowers, the Colombo Capo. This was a coincidence. Complete fluke. Mm. All right? Complete fucking fluke. He really it's, owned it. He really did own it. It was kind of funny. It ends up, after, after the fact I find this shit out, it was like, wait a minute, you own that place? It was kind of funny. So Sal, the same one that he said owned the restaurant, it's, it's Valentine's Day, and I've got this Colombian guy here, and I said, listen, here's the deal. We're going to get some flowers from Joey Flowers, all right? And you're going to knock on that door, and... I, and when he opens the door, you stick that fucking gun in his face, drag him by his hair, take him into the bedroom, put a pillow over his fucking head, and stick the fucking gun there, okay? And he'll, he's going to think he's going to die. When you get a pillow over your fucking head, and you're, you know. So, he knocks on the door, boop, 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 and he says, flower delivery, and Sal opens the door for Valentine's Day. He goes, Valentine's Day, flower delivery. He, he, it was, Flowers for me? He goes, yeah, and this too, motherfucker. So he pulls the gun out, gets into the house. I, I can watch him. I can see him going in. And uh, he says he falls down to the ground immediately. He's fucking grabs him by the fucking hair, puts the gun to his fucking head, and he wets himself. He shits himself. Drags him all the way to, to the fucking bedroom, right? And uh, he says, get on your knees and put your head in the fucking thing. And uh, he's got the gun to his head, puts it over his pillow. He's crying please 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 he goes i'll have the money tomorrow i will i will have the money i will sign the restaurant tomorrow tomorrow i swear i'll sign blah, 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 blah. this was uh yeah this happened before the attorney this happened right before the attorney because he was in hiding so he was shitting in his fucking pants 
And he goes, I'll have that money tomorrow, I swear, I swear. He turns him over, puts the gun in his mouth, he pulls the hammer back. And he goes, tomorrow, he, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So then he ties him to a chair and he pulls out a revolver with no firing pin. No firing pin, puts one bullet in, and spins it. Bzzz. And he says, I said, I'll have the money tomorrow. He says, well, he was praying, please God, please God, I swear, I swear, I say. He goes, well, we're going to see if you're going to have the money tomorrow. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one. He pulled the fucking trigger. Now, Sal fucking really did almost have a heart attack. He had to go to the hospital. Oh, okay, shit. Okay, he had to go to the hospital. So there was no firing pin, so the bullet was in there anyway. So even if it landed on the bullet, he wouldn't have, the gun yeah. wouldn't have went off. Now, that's a scare tactic. I mean, you have to know a gun. Uh, or you have a hollow. I mean, there's a few things you can do to scare the shit out of people. So the guy leaves, he ties him up and uh, unties him and tells him to make him a sandwich. It's kind of fucking comical. What well, shit, huh? Tells him to fucking make a goddamn sandwich for me. And then Sal calls me. Please, the, 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 stop, stop, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll send the, the, the money, I'll sign tomorrow, tomorrow. The Colombians came. I said, what are you, what are you talking about, Sal? The Colombians were here. They were here. They almost killed me. And I said, Sal, calm down. I don't know what you're talking about. I told you it was out of my hands. I told you what you were dealing with. And you said you were going to do this or this. And I said, it's completely out of my hands now. You're dealing with them now. This got nothing to do with me. Whatever they do, they do. You said you trusted your, you know, your life and, you know, with these people. So you don't want to sign over that restaurant. This is a consequence. This is what, you know, but... I'm out. I told him I'm out. I don't care what the fuck happened. He goes, please, Anthony, please. I will do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Because at first, when it was coming to signing over that restaurant, he first gave me the, the, the no. And then after that fucking incident, a couple different things changed, went about. So uh, he ended up signing the fucking restaurant over. Then he disappeared. Then after the, that, last, that last meeting... I told him he was dead, and uh, then he really disappeared, and we didn't know where the fuck he went. So in the meantime, I have my attorney. I got the signed restaurant over to me. He's filing the paperwork for transfer over the restaurant to my name. Sal's gone. No one can find him. Nobody's stopping me. Just a few days later, I'm in Miami. I got 50 kilos in an apartment. Again. 50. It's always a strange number, but 50, 100. Never 26, but uh, it was 50. And we always had a rule. Have a landline. Never use that landline. Back then it was star 69. Mm -hmm. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone calls you from a number. You want to know who the last call was? Star yeah. 69. It would tell you 372. That, you know, that was who called you. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we would never use that landline unless it was an absolute emergency and it was to one place and one place only you were calling you were calling columbia now, hey boom i got a problem all right you didn't call connections you didn't call girlfriends you didn't do this you didn't puck at that fucking phone no matter what because they could trace you in a second from that phone number because they knew your number mm -hmm. immediately cell phone yeah you can trace your phone but they got to find you they can find you but they got to mm -hmm. triangulate you a landline, they know exactly where that landline is, which the feds can go to that, that location. So the landline was never to be used. <clears throat> so I went out one night and I uh, came back to the came back to the apartment. There's 50 keys there. It's got to be 6 o'clock in the morning. Five, five, five or four. It was late as shit. And I'm on the phone with this some Colombian chick. I was talking to, and this bitch is yapping my ear off. And my battery dies on my phone. Battery dies. She talked the fucking battery to death. So I go to bed. Then just as I'm falling asleep, now it's about it's about 6:30 in the morning. My beeper goes off. Beep beep beep. 911. When you get the 911 code on your beeper, that means emergency. And it was my dad's phone number. My dad had just went to the, he, uh, the hospital a few times for his liver. So he was almost died a couple times. So I, had, I was like, oh, shit. I got no cell phone to call him. I got 50 keys over here in Miami. 
and I got a 911. I'm wondering, is he going to the hospital? Is he, is he dying? What's going on? You know, he would never call me. He's never called me 911 in his life. So I used the landline. I call. I said, T -t -t -t. I go, Pop, what, what's the matter? You okay? He goes, Yeah, I'm okay. Go, what's going on? He goes, I'm getting arrested. I'm like, oh, Fuck. Fuck. I said, Who's arresting you? He goes, Hallandale Police. I was like, Oh. Well, that kind of made my heart slow down because it was the state cops. I was thinking, fucking, who cares? Hallandale Police. It's not the FBI or the DEA. Mm. I don't care, right? So I'm like, what are they arresting you for? What the fuck's the charge? I, said, I don't know. They'll tell me when I'm in front of a judge. I'm like, you're getting arrested and you don't know what it's for. Now I'm thinking, are you sure they cops? Are you even getting kidnapped? Because they, they were doing that too back then. Mm. Now you're dressing up as Impersonate. Cops. Oh, yeah. Kidnapping people, fucking. So the cop gets on the phone and goes, hey, we're, we got your dad here. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, uh, how long until you can get down here? Because we got to take him away and we don't want to leave the house unoccupied. Because if, we, if someone sees us taking him out, they may be able to break into the house and rob his belongings. And then we get, we get in trouble for that. I was like, really? I said, what's he, and you're, you, you're Hallandale Police? He goes, yeah. I said, well, I'm all the way in Miami. I'm on a paint job. It's going to take me about an hour to get there at least. So he goes, all right, an hour. I said, it's 7.30 in the fucking morning. I got traffic on I-95. It's going to take some time. So he goes, okay, we'll wait. <clears throat> hmm. So I'm driving, and I'm thinking, something ain't right. I can sniff it out. Something ain't right. So I remember my brother. Let me call Hallandale Police again. Mm. So I call Hallandale Police and I say, hey, Hallandale. I said, my dad is getting arrested. He just got arrested. Could you tell me what the warrant's for? And she goes, oh, sure. Hold on. Let me put you with the warrant division. So she goes, oh, what's his name? I'm saying Anthony Cayucci. She goes, spell it. Blah, blah, blah. Spells the name. So the Anthony Cayucci goes, nope, we're not arresting him. We don't have a warrant for Anthony Cayucci. So I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. I'm thinking, is this a kidnapping? I said, well, why would, there's Hallandale police is arresting him. She goes, well, sometimes we, uh, we, uh, we go with the, the, the sheriff. They, you know, they're together. So sometimes it's the sheriff is actually arresting him. We just assist. So she goes, sometimes we just assist with the sheriff's office. She goes, just call the sheriff's office. I'm sure it's the sheriff. Mm. And, and sometimes there's a, there's a local Hallandale cop with him. I said, okay, I'll call the sheriff's office. So it's either the, it's either the city or the county is mm -hmm. arresting him, one of the two. So I called the sheriff, same fucking thing. Nope, sheriff's, no, we're not arresting him either. And I'm like, oh boy, this ain't good. It's either a kidnapping or it's the feds, mm -hmm. right? So now the cop calls me back. Where are you? I said, I'm, oh, wow. I'm really close, man. Don't leave the house. I'm on my way. I am on my way. I have, but there's about, I'm about 30 minutes away. So I want them there and I want them to think I'm coming. Because if it's the feds, it could be for me. And I kept thinking about that damn ripoff that whole time. You know, that thing with Sal, I was, wasn't sure. And I skipped a really, really important part of that whole thing with Sal, but you got the gist of it. <clears throat> so I wasn't sure, um, you know, if it was the feds or what the fuck was going on, but I, I knew it wasn't, it wasn't the city. It wasn't, it wasn't the county. It wasn't the city and it could be the feds or it could be a fucking, it could be a, a, a kidnapping. So I get the cop on the phone and I tell him to sit tight. I'm on my way. Please don't leave. He's got valuables there. Don't leave that fucking house. So I, I'm on 95. I take an exit and I go to my ex-girlfriend's house. She's right there. I knock, uh, I call her up and she's still kind of, you know, we were still kind of talking, right? And uh, I said, hey. She goes, hey, you're up early. I go, I need a favor. This is important. She goes, what's up? I said, you want to go to the beach today? 
And she knew something was wrong right there because I hate the fucking beach. She goes, yeah, it sounds like fun. I said, do me a favor, go outside and check the weather. Make sure it's nice and clear. Check everywhere because, you know, if it's got to be sunny, sunny, sunny. If the clouds are out, I can't come by. Is she by your dad's house? She's, no, she's about 30 minutes from my dad's okay, house, but okay. I'm on my way. Okay. I said, make sure it's clear, sun's out. Okay, so she knows. She's been around me long enough to know the lingo. She's never seen it. She knows what's up, right? Make sure it's clear out. She goes, okay, I'll, I'll pack the bags, and then I'm, I'm going to go outside and check out. And so she drives around a little neighborhood, make sure there's no cars watching her house. Because it's clear. It's, let's, it's clear. Let's go to the beach. Pop, pop, pop. Come over. So I go over, and she goes, tell, I tell her, hey, something's wrong. I need to use your phone. I had to get off my phone and get to her a different landline because I was on a cell phone. Mm. So I called my attorney. <clears throat> now, this attorney was representing me for two state trafficking charges that I completely skipped. Okay, So we'll have to talk about that mm. and a whole other thing. But this all leads to this shit. So I call my attorney and I go, listen, I need a favor. I need you to find out if the feds are arresting my dad. And he goes, well, if the feds are arresting him, they're not gonna, they're not gonna tell me. Sealed indictment. I go, someone's arresting my dad and I need to know who the fuck, either, it's a, either he's getting kidnapped or it's the fucking feds. He goes, well, I said, listen, you motherfucker, you better call them right now. I go, oh, okay. Because he goes, this is, this is a waste of time. Sealed indictments is a sealed indictment. It, it only gets opened in front of the judge. They will never tell me on the phone. And he's right. They won't. That's why it's called a sealed indictment. Mm -hmm. Until everyone gets arrested, then they tell you what the charges are. So, so you fucking make that phone call, goddammit. So he goes, I'll try, but it's, uh, I'm really wasting my time. I said, I'll call you back in 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, I pick up the phone. I call back. He goes... It's the feds, and you, and this one, and that one. I go, oh. it was a fucking Hemingway's deal. The whole fucking thing was Hemingway's. Now, I'm thinking, all right, I called from that landline. You traced it right back. They're gonna be on, the, I got it. I got 50 keys in that house. I gotta get, that dope doesn't belong to me. I, I got that. I'm, I'm responsible. I made that phone call. I picked up the fucking phone. Do I just bail or do I go get it? Mm. All right. It's a tough call, but I fucked up. So I called the cops back and I said, hey, I'm about 15 minutes away. So sit tight. I'm just coming around. The, you know, I got another 15. I said, traffic is slow. I'm now I'm headed back south. OK, I'm headed south. I'm headed south back to the condo and I'm fucking trying not, you can't speed because of, you know, tag and everything's probably, they're looking for mm -hmm. me, right? They're definitely looking for me. And as I get really close to the, really close to the, the condo, they call again and they say, hey, where are you? You know, we got to go. And I'm like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm going to call my, I'm going to call my mom, uh, because she lives across the lake. And she really did. She lived across, it was a big giant intercoastal. So uh, I said, just let me call my mom real quick to see if she can uh, to come secure the premises. Because, you know, I'm just still, I'm just still right around the corner. And they're trying to keep me, they want me to go to that fucking house so they can arrest me too. So let me call my mom and, and I'm kind of bullshitting with them, blah, 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 blah. So, called another girlfriend, hold on, and tell her, hey, meet me here at this place. We got to switch cars. So this happened right after I spoke to the first girlfriend. So I got to back up a little bit. So the first girlfriend I called, I called the lawyer and the lawyer tells me I got the indictment. As soon as I got the indictment, she I got to get the fuck out of there. I call another girlfriend and say, hey, bring me the car. Let's switch cars quick. I'll meet you at this gas station, blah, 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 blah. Be there in 15 minutes. No questions. Bang. We switch cars. Now they're not looking for my, they're looking for my car. I got, I'm in a different car. I'm in mm. her car. I'm in a black car. So now I'm still on the phone with these fuckers and I'm just getting to the apartment and I'm telling them some bullshit. I drive into the, <clears throat> I drive into the, it was a, it had valet for a, uh, the condominium had valet. Usually mm -hmm. it's just a, a, hotels have valet, but it was a condo, had valet parking. So it was a high end, high end joint. I pull up to the thing, pop the trunk take my keys, 
run into the fucking thing. And they're like, hey, you know, I stopped all valet. Like, hey, give us your keys. Give us your block. And then fuck, fuck you. Now my heart's pounding. I'm, boom, 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 boom. I'm thinking they star 69. They're already, they're already there. They should have already been there. They should have been in that apartment. Mm. They, had, they had 45 minutes. All they had to do was call local. Mm-hmm. Right? Local Miami. It was right there. Boom. Right. Just stop. The, stand in front of the door. They knew exactly where it was. <clears throat> I go in, hit the elevator, go up to the top floor. Wait, the door opens. Nobody there. Run down the hall. Go in to put the key in. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to turn this key and there's going to be cops in there. I turn, open, boom, empty. Nobody there. Grab the two suitcases. Got my 50 keys. Now I'm going down the fire exit because I ain't going down the fucking elevator, <laughs> right? I'm going out the back. So I'm going down. 50 keys going downstairs is hard. It's really hard. That's fucking not over. It's 100 pounds, right? 100 and something. Mm-hmm. You're going down the fire. Fucking. Yeah. Could you imagine if I had to go up the stairs? I'd be fucked. But going down the stairs, right? I'm sweating like a motherfucker. I get through the, the exit, the fire exit, go back through the lobby. People are looking at me like, what the hell? Suitcases. I'm in a hurry going to the airport. <laughs> Throw them in the back of the back of the trunk, shut the car, and I take off. Now, I, I, I'm out of, the, I'm out of the, the, uh, the condo, I'm out of the, the, uh, the apartment, but I'm not out of the woods yet, okay? As I'm driving down the street, I'm going to do, do, now I'm driving, I'm driving forward, and down this road, I stop at the stop sign, and I see lights coming, the lights are coming. And I'm like, oh shit, what do I do? So I keep going, I keep going, and I just drive normally, 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 and they pass me. And there's two co- it's two uh, Miami-Dade cops with two black cars, fucking FBI, mm. with the FBI on their, on their fucking hats, okay? So I'm in my, a black car, completely different car. I just drive normal, boop, 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 and I'm watching the rearview mirror, and I'm going, oh, please don't stop, don't put your brake lights on, don't, 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 and they fucking hit the brake. <laughs> 